championships were held at Rich Stadium and drew over 9,000 fans for five championship games. The Class D game was a rematch of last year's Class D final. For the second straight year, the Maple Grove Red Dragons beat the Randolph Cardinals. The Class D game featured a record-setting performance by quarterback Chris Jimerson of Gowanda. Jimerson threw for 268 yards and four touchdowns as the Panthers won the Class C title. The Springville Griffins were looking for back-to-back -back state titles, but they ran into a freight train known as the Lackawanna Steelers. The Steelers determined the Griffins 30-13. The Class A contest lived up to its billing as a main event. It pitted the number two-ranked Sweet Home Panthers versus the number one-ranked Niagara Wheat Field Falcons. What a game it was. After trading blows, the Falcons were the last team standing as Jeff Schoonover dived in from one yard out with 30 seconds left. The Class AA game also featured two heavyweights, the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks and the Orchard Park Quakers. Orchard Park proved be too much for the Lumberjacks as they won back-to-back -back sectional titles as they beat North Tonawanda 20-3. Here's your Section 5 or Section 6 matchups. In Class D, Maple Grove takes on Clyde Savannah. In Class C, Tawanda hosts powerhouse Caledonia Munford. In the Class B title game, the Lackawanna Steelers look to continue their role as they host the Hornell Red Raiders. In Class A, two undefeateds go at it as Greece Olympia takes on Niagara Wheatfield. Niagara Wheatfield is number one in the state, Greece Olympia number two in the state. And in Class AA, Ochi Park takes on powerhouse Fairport. Let's go to the HTTV Top 10 Performances from the Playoffs. At number 10, Jeff Schooner of Niagara Wheatfield had that one-yard touchdown with 30 seconds left to beat Sweet Home 20-17. Number nine, Sweet Home quarterback Brendan Brady did his best as he rushed 105 yards on nine carries. And number eight, Jordan Rombacher of Maple Grove, the eighth grader, kicked a 20-yard field goal in the game. And number seven, Andy Freed of Orchard Park, 21 carries, 132 yards, and a touchdown. And number six is Maple Grove's Greg Powell. He had 21 carries and 138 yards. And number five, Sal Palermo of Orchard Park, the Italian Clydesdale, was the HGTV player of the game as Orchard Park beat North Tonawanda. 20 to 3. And number 4, Lackawanna's Kima Dickinson returned to kick off 88 yards for a touchdown. And number 3, Niagara Field's defensive team in Frank Pavisic. He had a defensive touchdown and had two key stops on the goal line. And number 2, quarterback Jason Herman of Niagara Field. He led the Falcons 88 yards to the game winning touchdown. He rushed for 46 of those 88 yards. And the top performance of the week on HGTV, Chris Jimerson of Gowanda, 19 of 30 passing, 268 yards. Four touchdowns as Gowanda won the Class C championship. Let's switch over to our HGTV Sports Coaches Bowl. For the small schools, at number 10, Burgard and Randolph are the tie. Number 9, it's Albion. Number 8, Allegheny Limestone. And number 7, it's Randolph. 6 is Portville. 5, Alden. Number 4 is Maple Grove. Springville's at 3. Gowanda at 2. And Lackawanna remains the top spot. For the large schools, Lockport checks in at 10. Clarence at 9. Tonawanda at 8. Hutch Tuck at 7. South Park at 6, North Tonawanda at 5, Jamestown's at 4, Sweet Home at 3, Orchard Park at 2, and the Niagara Reef Field Falcons maintain the number one spot. Let's look at the New York State rankings. In Class D, Randolph's at 12, and Maple Grove is at 5. Class C, Allegheny Limestone's 17, Akron at 16, Portville is 15, and Gowanda checks in at number 9. In Class B, Springville's at 19, Buffalo's Hutch Tech at number 11, Lackawanna is at number 2. In Class A, Tonawanna is 18, Sweet Home at 10, and Niagara Wheatfield is the number one team in the state. And in Class AA, North Tonawanna is 19, Jamestown at 17, and Orchard Park checks in in the top 10 at number 9. And that's a look around Section 6. Thank you. 
second half. Cornell leads Lackawanna by a score of 12 to 8. The first half, for the most part, was dominated by Cornell due to Lackawanna turnovers throughout this year, but uh, Lackawanna came back there at the end. Yeah, interesting ball game. Let's take a look at some individual things first. Kowalski 5 for 10. Uh, he's going for 131 yards. Gilbert with four receptions for 97 yards. And Turner with nine carries for 54 yards. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Then we can talk maybe a little bit more about statistics and some individual stuff for Hornell. First touchdown there. Brian Young, the quarterback, three yards out. It was 6 nothing Hornell at that point. They went for two, did not get it. Here's the second touchdown. Burdett, the tailback, throws the option pass there to Kyle Johnson. All right, down the sidelines, pass for Turner, four, the touchdown, 12 nothing Hornell. Here's the play before the half, 37 seconds, Kowalski, hit as he throws, 34 yards to Robert Sharika in the end zone, four, the touchdown, and then they go for two on the play, and they did get it as Ray Turner had Kima Dickinson on this play right here. You see the pitch, Turner steps up, throws the wounded duck, but Dickinson climbs the ladder to catch it in the end zone, two-point conversion, score at the half, that's what we got 12 to 8 as Lackawanna got themselves back in this football game and is coming up for here for the second half. Well, Kowalski did a real good job on that touchdown as he evaded Nate McMind, who just pancaked him, and then a good reception for the two point uh, conversion. Uh, Gary says 43 yards on nine carries for Hornell, running by committee. Rose says 29 yards on seven carries, and Burdett has 30 yards on seven carries. He's also thrown a touchdown pass, and uh, Young has picked up 15 yards on five carries. We're going to take a look at team statistics after this kickoff. Well, the kickoff roll on the ground, and Turner picks it up at the 48-yard line, and he's going to get up to the 47-yard line to mark him down at another good field position to start for the Lackawanna Steelers. Take a look at the stats from the first half of this football game as Turner will start it off there. Rushing yards, look at that, Hornell 123 to Lackawanna 60. Passing yards, Lackawanna 131 to Hornell's minus one. That, if you ask him before the game, will be a first lap. And look at the total yardage and the turnovers. Yeah, 122, 191, Lackawanna leading Lackawanna with three turnovers to one. All the penalties on Hornell's side. Time of possession, Hornell. First down play, Kowalski pitches to Turner, going left side, and he had a little bit of hope, but a close up quickly there by Hornell, and Mark Collins jo joins us here for the third quarter of action here. Mark, your impressions for that first half? Well, I'll tell you, in the first half, really impressive Hornell, Kevin. They just played a spectacular first half. Everything fundamentally sound, um, and with Lackawanna, just no emotion in the first half. Big turnovers, but the, they have to get some emotion in the, and play with emotion this half. Well, Lackawanna, great field position to start the second half. I know you don't want to kick deep for Turner and company, but Kevin, can you give up that kind of field position? Almost a 50-yard line every time for a start. Second down, eight for the Steelers. Kowalski got dinged up in the first half, back under their center. And Kowalski, the pass, steps up, looking on a high pass to Gilbert, and that was so out of bounds. Double coverage there on Derek Gilbert. Let's go to our sidelines with Steve Bonzik. Steve? Caught up with Lackawanna coach Bill Moore at halftime. I said, Bill, what's the key for the rest of the afternoon? He said, Steve, no more fumbles, please. So that's his key. Take care of the football, and they should be in good shape. Now back upstairs. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. And uh, let's see a cold on the sidewalk. We don't have to get any cold here in the booth. Actually, that's, that's why I came up in the booth here. It's a little chilly. It's a little damp down there. Not really cold. It's the damp that's the good thing. I'm a little surprised. Lackawanna passing right away. Uh, third down and long. Down game. Third down and long. And here's the draw play to Turner. Turner with the first tackle, but only got another yard on the play. Draw down in the middle. I believe that is Arnaud coming for the tackle from the safety spot. We we'll see what happens here, Mark. Uh, they take themselves out of their game plan. They're a running football team. They can't pass on occasion. You got second and eight. Run the ball on second down. See where you stand on third yeah, down. I totally agree with you, Ralph. Even in the first half, they didn't stay with the running game, especially on that fourth and one from the goal line. I thought they had to go with the power and give it to one of their halfbacks and get in the end zone. And then, like I said, Turner needs a little confidence booster anyhow. You got to give him the ball. Yeah, he does. Stay with your butt and go with it. Stay with Turner. So he can back the punt, standing in his own 37. Pitches off, mild pressure. And this is Brewer who catches it. Just inside his 20. He'll be taken down at the 22-yard line. Many scores there. I think Dickinson was one of the key members down there for the Steelers on the coverage. I think a point to be made here now, Kevin and Mark, is that the field, if you look at it, looks like it's icing up a little bit, getting a little slippery. 
Yeah, I'm down on the field. Uh, in the first half, really not bad footing for both teams. Oh, but right. as, as it gets colder, yeah, it's going to ice up a little bit. I thought it was kind of an interesting point, Walt. I was on the Lackawanna sideline, and uh, a couple of Lackawanna people were saying, you know, you know what really happened? They scored at 2 o'clock. He said, Lackawanna doesn't get used to playing until 2 o'clock. So the first half, they weren't really ready to play. So maybe this half will be a little different. First down and 10 for the Red Raiders. For at least 12. They get to the fullback. Rose, he had some good runs there in the first half. And could pick up three, maybe four on that turf there. One thing about this turf, guys, it is an older turf. And I were down there earlier also in the pregame. And I tell you what, there isn't much cushioning on that turf. No, it, it was fast in the beginning of the game. But you could just look out there and see as it's starting to glisten a little bit. Get a little slippery. That's not going to help lack of water. And wait for the, the games later on today. Oh, man. Because it's some ice there. Second down. Six yards to go. Ten and some change to go here in the third quarter. Quarterback keeper Young. He dives ahead for another three yards. That'll bring up a third and three situation. Third and maybe two. We've got maybe three yards on the carry. Third and two now to be for Ornell. Mark, I think that Lackawanna, we've got a good coaching staff as Ornell does. Probably made a lot of adjustments defensively because Ornell moved the guy wrong in the first half. Yeah, and, and I was on the sideline walk, and I'll tell you, the defensive coordinator for Lackawanna, he seemed to be confused himself, and, and really his players were a little bit confused with what uh, Ornell was doing, and, and Ornell is just executing them real well. Third down, two. Young gives to Garys. Garys breaks the first tackle, gets the first down, and a couple more out across the 35-yard line. That's good second effort. It looks like he was stopped originally. Yeah, and I think that's a key stat if we look at it, Walt, is that Hornell on third down has just been converting all afternoon. Well, we talked a lot about Lackawanna's offensive line as we look at the replay. Looks like he was stopped and then he scored it through, but Hornell's offensive line has been very solid in this game, Kevin. Yeah, those guys up front there, Flight's open. Wow, wow, Rollins and McMines. First down play. Young going to keep it himself around the corner. Big yardage. Cross midfield. Knocked out of bounds. And put him at the 40 yard line. Actually, one in the back at the 45 yard line. They tried to make a snowman out of him. Young to make a little imprint. <laughs> a little softer landing than the turf. So let's look at it there. So let's watch this hit. Let's see if he makes a snowman turn or just has to spread his arms out a little bit. Snow Angel there. Uh, they put it down at the 45-yard line where it's initially knocked out. First down, Hornell, they go right to the line of scrimmage here. Young has run the ball effectively in this game. This one to Garys, and he carries it close to the 40-yard line, bringing down to 41. Hey, Mark, he runs a little bit bigger than his size. He's like only 160 pounds. He runs inside quite a bit. Yeah, and give his offensive line some credit. They've really been opening up nice holes, giving them a little room to get started. Both the backs, though, Rose and, uh, and Jerry's are really uh, doing a nice job running the ball. Lackawanna needs someone to step up on defense a while and make a big hit. They haven't had some real big sticks. Really, when we saw Springville, boy, they were just knocking some people off the ball, so they got to step up here. Well, they put themselves, Kevin, in good position, second and five. That's second down, uh, long five, maybe six. Rose and a carry's knocked down. By Dean, the man having around the ankles in the backfield, he tripped him up, and he still pulled ahead for three yards. So that'll bring up another third and short, about third and three. The Lackawanna really needs to step up here one of these times and stop Hornell on one of these big third down plays. Yeah, like you said, uh, Hornell's really been converting on third down, and that was the big key to their game. Well, today was ball control, and they really have done a nice job, especially against Lackawanna, because they have a lot of talented players in defense. That's Paul Fitzgerald, the defensive coach there. And Bill Moore next to the head coach. A great shot of Rosio put the shoe back on. He lost it on that carry. I think Hornell's doing offensively what Lackawanna should be doing. Run the football first. First, second, third down. Take your chances. Yeah, we saw the rushing yards. Uh, 123 in the first half for Hornell and 60 for Lackawanna. And coming in this game, I don't know, all, all of us would have thought that would have been vice versa. You know, but what was surprising was that Lackawanna had more holding. That last drive was only like a 45-yard drive that they actually all gained Hornell. I thought watching the game that Hornell would have had more yardage. Third down, a long three for the Red Raiders. Young pitches to Gary. Has a corner, and he got by Feeney for the first down. Well, he's so quick, Mark, that he's tough to bring down. It looks like the Hornell player is down and injured. Yeah, and like you said, well, he, he, I think he's got Lackawanna by surprise today. They, I don't think they really thought they were going to see a back as good as this kid. I mean, he really does have good outside speed. He's a good runner inside the tackles, too. He's a tough kid. Well, he's good, but I think right now the quarterback is making the difference as you see the injured player there, number two, Chris Brewer, who I don't think Brewer's caught a pass yet this game, and he's got 30 
57 for 854 yards coming in. They marked him short. It's fourth down in inches. Oh, wow. Bad spot there for Hornell. Bad if you're a Hornell fan. Well, he could have the first down. Young keeps it that time, and no doubt about that one as he comes ahead for three yards and a first down. No, Mark, you like the quarterback from Maple Grove. You were talking about him? Yeah, Randall Secchi. But this kid, Brian Young, 81 for 135, 19 touchdowns, two picks, 1,355 yards. His coach thinks he's the best in the state. Yeah. He and Driscoll. And after, after seeing him today, I mean, he has just played a perfect ball game so far. No mistakes. Picks up the big third down. Plus, it really impressed me well with the two interceptions. That's phenomenal with how many times he's thrown the ball this year. First down play for the Red Raiders. They get to Gary. And he got maybe a yard or two at the line of scrimmage. If I'm not mistaken, Young is brought down by big Robert Reese with a 300 pounder. 299. <laughs> <laughs> we got to watch kids wait. I hear my friend from Orchard Park's not too happy with Yeah, he Palermo. wasn't too happy at uh, Palermo, but uh, he played a great ball game and he sort of got on him on his weight a little bit. We apologize for that. But I'll tell you what, though. Great, great game plan here by Cornell. Lack of one, expecting them to come in and throw the football, and they're not throwing the football. They're running the football. Yeah. And I want to mention about Young. I believe he's a four-year starter at Hornell yeah, at quarterback. I, I think that's just a huge factor, and you can tell he's just really a seasoned veteran so far. Second down eight. Young to throw. Let's it fly. Almost picked off, and Johnson, did he come down with it? No, he did not. Hit wow. first by Feeney, though. Well, Young got away with one. That should have been a... An interception. That's, yeah, that's one. He didn't get over the Steeler uh, defensive back or linebacker. We were just talking about only throwing two interceptions. This could have been number three right here. Well, not a real good decision, but still, i got to give him credit. He throws a good ball. He almost puts it in between the linebacker and the, and the defensive back here. Well, he's a classic passer, okay? When I was there Corning, it's 40 miles west of Corning, 50 miles uh, east of Olean, and a kid like Young is not going to get the same press as a Will Bristol from Rochester. But his coach thinks he's every bit as good as Will Bristol, who's supposed to be the best in the state. Third down, long eight. Will Pisco plays for third port, by the way. And here comes the option pitch. They pitch it to Gary. He gets it. And knocked out by Kima Dickinson. He'll be short of the first down for probably uh, three yards. But great, great <laughs> defense by Lackawanna. <laughs> you know, they played that perfectly. I mean, Young would not have been able to get the first down mark. And let's, let's watch the uh, play by Dickinson on defense. Yeah, chasing it down, and he tackled the quarterback too late. Oh, <laughs> facial. Did you see that, guys? That's not a snowman, that's a snowman. <laughs> oh, my God. Talk about getting a case of the chills in this game. That was Shannon Richardson who tackled the quarterback. Fourth down and three here. The Red Raiders are going for it. Young, nice block there on the pitch by Rose. Sets up, throwing deep to the end, looking for Hoyt. And he goes to the hands of Dickens in the field with the defender. Wow, Dilbert almost made a critical mistake. Oh, man, if this ball had gone through his hands and might have gotten it for a touchdown, yeah, that would have been horrible. I agree with you on that, Walt. That's where you got to knock the ball down. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he was in position to knock it down and pick it off. Here, Mark. You yeah, it look right here. This is where a DB, you just knock the ball down, especially with the field position anyhow. I mean, you, you intercept it there in the end zone, he makes the tackle. But like I said, I'll tell you, Lackawanna, that was a big stand for him right there. Let's watch it now. You can see the big rush here. Yeah. And a second look, now a third look. Gilbert was all over this pass, getting back to live action in just a second. Good rush. Gilbert in position, almost made a mistake, and Point almost had the deflection. First down draw, play it away. Turner up the middle, and he got five, maybe six yards yeah. on the kill. So that's what they got to do. Five, six yards on first down, one second down. Oh, and there's plenty of time. Six minutes in the third quarter, Ralph. They, they just they have to reestablish the running game. Didn't do it in the first half at all. Yeah, yeah. Cornell on that four, his first down play at 84 yards, and they go for the end zone. Well, they went for the long ball. I mean, they got the quarterback yeah. to do it. Unfortunately, how many times have they faced a defensive back that's 6'4 and with a skill like Gilbert? Yeah, and I think that shows the confidence the coach has in, in Young. Second down and four for the Steelers. 5.50 to play here. Second quarter. Here comes the sweet play, and that's the rush down way, and he goes nowhere. Great tackle. Big number 75 of front. Kyle Flight's the nose tackle. Hell, Flight, 5'8", 211, a junior. He was on that all the way. Did not fool 75 Flight. See, this game's going to go right down to the wire. Well, that's a loss of uh, two yards on the play. Third, actually, three yards on the play. Third down at seven now. Well, this game's over. It could be a critical call by Cornell not going to the single point after their first touchdown. Long count for Kowalski. Blitz by Rose. Steps up, throws, and is looking for Rush on Lee. And maybe Derek Gilbert, but had to get rid of it in a hurry. Yeah, again, I, I really don't like the call, Mark. I mean, it's a 
know, fourth down and six, we'll watch the pressure. I know Kowalski's a good passer, but he's got backs that average nine and a half yards per carry. Yeah, here's a look at it. Rose coming off the uh, left end there. He's a tough kid, a linebacker. Also gets some good pressure from up the middle. But I, I agree with you, Walt. Uh, I'm really surprised. There's still plenty of time to, you know, to, to establish your um, running game. And that's actually the first time we see uh, Lee carry the ball today. And, and last week had a big game against Springville. Oh, Konsky has a pressure out there. There's a Sarika back to punt. Gary's in blue to return. Kick comes off his foot and roll. Oh, fouls at the 36. Picked up by Gary's, and he's tackled immediately by Kima Dickinson. Good job by Kima Dickinson because uh, Gary's is very shifty and very quick. And I'll tell you, if Cornell gets the next score, Lackawanna's in trouble. Yeah, but that's an important play right there, Walt. Even, you know, it doesn't look that big now, but just making good plays. That was a good special teams play, and that's the kind of stuff that carries over into your defensive set here and then into the offense. I mean, Lackawanna just has to put some string, a string some good plays together. See, the block was missed there by Chris Brewer, and it allowed Dickinson to come up and make the tackle after a nice punt by Robert Sarico. First down for the Red Raiders at their 29-yard line. Their game lasts against Waterloo. No scoring in the second half. 21-14 and a half, and it stayed that way. Bridget on the series at the field. He'll take a tail back. And good run there for Chris Bridget. Eight yards. Oh, that's beautiful. First down, you pick up eight yards. They run by committee, uh, Mark Collins, which is unusual. Rules, Bridget, and Gary's all have over 600 yards on the year. Yeah, in the preview show, as we said, well-balanced offensive attack. Really run the ball well. And that's one of the reasons that Young is such a good quarterback, too. I mean, when you're running the ball, and here, you know, obviously, they get a good running game. It, it really helps the passing game out. So they're well-balanced, and they really have uh, Lackawanna off-balance all day so far today. So now you're in position, Kevin, second and two to throw a long pass. They'll keep it on the ground with a full back, and that's Arno, and he has a first down on the carry. And they're content to pick up the first down and use the block up. So even if they got a field goal, they, they would still need a touchdown to be secure or have a secure lead in this game. So the field goal would make it 15 to 8, and Lackawanna would still be within that striking distance. So there's two two point conversions that Cornell tried at fail line, and we questioned the first one. Maybe with that good kicker, Rollins, why not go for one? That could be huge. That'll be first down now at the 41 yard line. We'll see if that does come into play in this football game. Four minutes to play. Third quarter, one on top, 12 to 8. Young hands off to Bridget. Good yardage again. 8, maybe 9. Now yeah, the offensive line, Lowell, Rollins, Oakton, and the tackle slight with mine and shot in there from time to time at Brown, but tight end with it. Not. They're doing a great job, Mark. Man, there's a look at it there. Well, you, you cannot give up that many yards on first down there. Their linebackers just don't seem to be filling off the tackle. I mean, their line's getting off the ball well, but uh, I don't see their linebackers really stepping up and filling those holes today, and that's, that's key. They're a smaller football team, Kevin, but yet they're pushing back a lot around. On the leg drive, boy. Second down, and caught a long one, and Young on the keeper again here, and he's got the first down. He shot out there at the cannon, Mark. <laughs> it looks funny, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it actually looked like they moved before the snap, even though he had the ball in his hands. You know, they, they did that before, and it looked like Canadian football almost, like they're moving <laughs> before the ball snap. <laughs> yeah, sure, somebody's moving there. Somebody moved first there. So I think it was the center. Let's slow it down here, guys. No, no, no. They're no. all right. It's a legal play. They just got the line coming real quick. First down in Lackawanna territory at the 47. This is Burbett again, and he had a nice run for the last two times on first down, and only two yards on that carry. Yeah, well, see, see, it was pretty fast, wasn't it? Yeah, see, on that play right there, the wall, you know, we give up two yards that time, and that time, that time they did throw the hole off tackle, and that's what Lackawanna has to do, and now they put him, you know, they got to stop him, they can't let him chew up too much time off the clock. Well, I think Lackawanna is a frustrated football team here. Uh, they expected to come in here, I think, and, and roll over this team, but uh, in defense of Lackawanna, they are banged up. They're banged up without Messicar, their linebacker. They're banged up on the offensive line. They've got yeah. a makeshift yeah. offensive line. But uh, this point out club's a heck of a ball club. Second down eight for the Red Raiders. Young's going to throw the football. Got a man open, going deep. Throws in there and over the head. And then a full flag on Derek Gilbert for the interference. He's a good call. Now Gilbert never turned around and faced the football. Yeah, no, there's no complaint. I mean, you yeah. got to turn around yeah, and get I mean, the ball. And, and Ross, he had plenty of time to turn around. I mean, when Young let the ball go, he had at least five seconds to turn around. And, and the receiver actually wasn't still in stride. He was actually waiting for the ball to we come out. We got pass interference on the defense. 
series there. Maybe it'll carry over into the offense here. They really need to, you know, move the chains a couple times here. Second down. We'll call it five. For the Steelers. Power eye and Aces Turner. Hasn't seen the ball in a while there. He almost fouled with that one again. He always fumbled twice. He was hit out of bounds there in the first half. And he fumbled when he got hit out of bounds. And he juggled it on that play. Yeah, he's had a rough time hanging on to the football. And he almost bobbled that one, but he's your bread and butter, man. He turns it upfield. Good tackling there, just a little slip tackle. You see the ball almost staying loose. Brian Young on the stop. I'll tell you, but, Mark, you, you got to keep going to turn. Yeah, I think you got to stay with it. I, I think the momentum swaying a little bit. Uh, Hornell didn't have a real great series on offense last time. The Walsh is going to for the one yard, and I don't know if he got it, guys. I don't know if he got it. Now, the ref, the ref got a mark there. Let's see if his mark is going to give it to him. Well, uh, there's sort of been a dilemma that uh, Dickinson's saying they have it. They line up Turner so deep in the backfield for that short yardage, you can't give him the ball. Yeah. You've got to go with the quarterback. Yeah, and I'm surprised, like you said, well, I'm surprised they wouldn't move him up just to didn't give it to him because, you know, when you got that much, I was surprised on that fourth and one yeah. down the goal line. That's no my leaving theory. You put the guy back seven yards for one yard. you gotta, you got to go up with a fullback or get closer. Well, that was the last play of the third quarter. We'll show you the measure before we take you to the break here. Key measurement here in this football game. There's only 12 more minutes left to play. The Hornell on top here, and this could continue Lackawanna's driver. Maybe a tough decision to go for it on fourth down or a punt. The measurement. They got it. And Mark Collins says they got it. I don't know. I don't think they got it. They got it. They got it. Mark Collins right. No. Mark Collins out. Mark Collins right. I'm just a little younger. My eyes are still a little bit better. Look at that blue, Kevin. Young is the key in this game right here. The quarterback for Hornell, they lead 12-8. After the three quarters here on the draft, it's HTTV Sports. Hey, Mike, you want Looking for an exciting way to spend time with the family during the holidays? Then don't miss the annual Adelphia Night with the Buffalo Sabres, Tuesday, December 23rd at 7.05 p.m. Bring the entire family and save $4 off each ticket with a discounted coupon in your cable bill, available exclusively to Adelphia customers. Catch all the action and excitement as the Buffalo Sabres battle the Detroit Red Wings, Tuesday, December 23rd. Where any supplies are limited and certain restrictions apply. Don't miss Adelphia Night with the Buffalo Sabres, Tuesday, December 23rd. Your family will love you for it. Security is one of the main reasons you need a steel replacement door from DeGeorge. Stop by our showroom at 1039 Military Road and we'll help you find the perfect door for your home budget. Our steel insulated doors are designed to provide maximum security and are energy efficient. DeGeorge also features the best strong doors and latest in security strong doors. Our work is backed by a solid staff of qualified installers, no subcontractors. Call DeGeorge for a free estimate. We go where you are, no matter how far. We're back here to start the fourth quarter of action. Just 12 minutes left to play. Red Raiders on top, 12 to 8. And uh, they'll stay content with one more score here in the second half. Much like they did last time for Waterloo. First down, though, for the Steelers. The fans are rocking. Here's a carry by Dickinson, and he touches ahead for about three, maybe four on the foul ahead there. He's six foot two, maybe four for four yards. Yeah, make a point here. The offensive line for Lackawanna. Swanson starting at the left guard in place of Messicard. Campone and Kavanaugh, the center of regulars. Deion Davis is out, so he's going to be faced by Kowalski. And Fokigo's in the starting lineup. So they're playing with a makeshift offensive line, Mark. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they're throwing more. Yeah, and uh, I think they really miss Messicar on defense, too, Walt. I mean, oh, that's, that's the linebacker, I think, that really isn't filling today. He's uh, got to play in his place. And Second down, seven. Motion by Dickinson. Walsh pick it to Turner. They bring it on the outside. And look at that block, and he could go here. Oh, another one. Ray Turner slowed down, shifted his foot out the other hand, and taken down at the 32 yard line. And that block mark, Dickinson <laughs> set that whole play up. Well, I'll tell you, he was Dickinson. He really, he, I mean, usually usually the receivers don't block like this. Well, he puts the guy <laughs> flat on his back. Here he looks at it. makes the play. Oh, well, and then he down. Makes, and then he gets another block upfield and really gets turned on the sideline. But like I said, I feel the momentum swinging a little bit here in Lackawanna's favor. That's a serve. We had a pancake on that play. Yeah, let's watch it now. now. He not only makes the first block, then he comes on and makes the second block, and Mike Hoyt makes another stop from behind. First down to Hornell, 32. And Kowalski to keep himself on the end of the round. And look at that, he's got a first down and more taken down inside the 20-yard line. Nice call. Now 
great call. I mean, they didn't expect that. 18 yard line, he's knocked out of bounds. I, I, I was talking to uh, Coach Moore this week on the phone now, Walt, and we were looking at Dan Kowalski. I was impressed. I was impressed that he basically said that, uh, you know, he lets his quarterback check off 60 or 70 percent of the time and, make, and lets him make his own call. For a junior, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Charles, now he's, up, he's playing with that injured right shoulder, so he's not 100 percent. So I'm surprised they're letting him off. That play there possibly could have checked off the way it looked. Gilbert and Dickinson. Dickinson's on off to his screen there. He's at the top on the outside of Gilbert there. On his first down play at the 18-yard line, they go to Turner. Turner looks like he thought about passing. Cuts back here. And now nice block. And Turner broke a tackle. Another tackle. A big run there for a one-yard gain. <laughs> That's a great run for one yard. But really against this warning defense by Hornell, they play a good speed defense. They tackle the ball. Their linebackers are their strength. You really don't want to do that. You don't want to leave yourself open for those shots. Well, he's running around, there and this football's open, and somebody can poke it away. One thing you don't want to do with Lackawanna is you've got to watch the backside, especially on those plays. That's what happened to Springville last week, if you remember. Well, you got to watch the backside. I'm sure Hornell's coaches are really in practice this week saying, you know, these guys go one way, but don't don't come out of your lanes. Watch the backside because they'll cut back, and they'll go all the way into the end zone. See the big fellow there, Nate. Nick Mines on the tackle, 74. Great turnover, 100 yards now through the football game on 15 carries. A quiet 100 yards for Turner. Second down play, Kowalski looking towards Gilbert. And it goes up, jump ball, he goes up and catches it. And the, no, he dropped it. It looks like he had it at the one-yard line, but then he saw the football shoot out of there. And what a down. shame, what a shame. Gilbert getting up slowly, official calling a timeout. I'll tell you, I, I think Gilbert was interfered with it about the five-yard line. Uh, or seven yard line in that area, we watched the replay, he was glad. He made a great effort to get to the football, now he's going to it down and hurt. And he's going to cramp it. Well, he's got some cramps, so they have to work that out. Hey, it's not like that. Oh, receivers aren't supposed to work that <laughs> Let's okay. watch this now. And this is a, you know, it's a high percentage play when you have Dilbert down there, they're using it, it's effective. Usually he comes down with that football. Yeah, just put it up in the air and let him Well, that's a good defensive ball. play. Number two, there's Chris Brewer, and 44, Derek Okonski to knock it away. Gilbert looking for an interference. I thought he was interfered upfield at about the seven-yard line. That somebody sort of conceded his body and that oh, block through it and was able to get to the football. Well, they're working out the crap there on Jared Gilbert. The passing completed brings up third down and nine for the Steelers. Once again, two down territory here for them to get to pick up the first down on the play. And Gilbert, man, he's a big guy. You, you don't see too many wide receivers and defensive backs in high school football at 6'4", 191 in this area. Well, the only thing keeping Jared Gilbert out of Division One next year would be Scholastics. And that's one thing that I like to talk about. Lackawanna, great football program, great basketball program. They need work on their baseball program. But <laughs> as far as school now, my daughter transferred there from ORV, which is a parochial school in the seventh grade. Now, I would not let her go to Lackawanna last year. But this year, they completely changed the structuring of the school around. They have three schools. They have monitors. Other schools in western New York are now looking at Lackawanna's situation. They've got that school back where it belongs. And I would be willing to bet you five, ten years from now, Kevin, a lot of these inner city athletes will be going to Division One from Lackawanna. Yeah, and, and good signs, too. Talking to the coach this week, uh, Walt, he said that uh, there's a chance that uh, some of his players are going to go on and PG your prep school and try and right. get their grades up and, and, and get into the better schools. And, and that's a, a move in the right direction. It is. But I think five, ten years from now, the improvement in the Lackawanna school system with Mark Phelan uh, heading up the school board and the changes, that you're going to see these kids with better grades. Well, I, I tell you what, guys, you for non-athletes, education is so important right. today. You can't go anywhere without it. Look at us. Third down and nine. I'm just kidding here. Third down and nine. Big, big play. Kowalski pitches to Turner. Flag on the play, probably the motion. And Turner will be breaking tackles here and getting close to the first down. Look at that run by Wade Turner. I thought they had him in the backfield. Well, it's interesting where the flag will be. Obviously, it's against Lackawanna. At 171 pounds, he is a strong little guy, isn't he? Turner's a package. He's like a war gun. Well, they'll bring this one back on a penalty. I think that gives us an indication of what kind of athlete he really is. Well, didn't have a great first half. Two big fumbles. Yeah, I'm sure. Look at the procedure. They're going to bring it back. Caught back on a five yards on a little procedure. But I, I think at this point, let's watch the replay. That's the fake to Joe West. You know, Joe West hasn't played the ball at all, hasn't he, in this game? And Turner's 
fisting and then hollering the Rex for yardage. I think at this point, though, uh, let's watch his strength. I think at this point, Lackawanna is a little confused as to what to call it. They're really grasping here. Did it, I think, reverse? Yeah, but that, that's good signs of the way. That's the way Turner that we're used to seeing run the ball right there. And like I said, first half, fumbles two. You know, he's a little down on himself. Second half, he really, you know, he really looks like he's he's back to his old self. There. And it's good, you know, it's good signs for Lackawanna. It's still nine minutes to go in the ball game. Yeah. Good field position. Third down and 14. So many times we really turn to break the big one for him right up the middle, right to the uh, the hole between the guard and the tackle. Third down, it's 14. Turner's, Turner's out of the ball game, and West has replaced him. That's a surprise. And if they can't up there, Brooks and Okonshi's going to bring Kowalski down. And West missed the block. I believe West missed the block, and they're going to have to punt the football or go for that fourth and very long. I think they'd be well advised here to punt the football. On the 30 yard line? On the 30 yard line, put him back inside the pass. There's a look at it here, but uh, Lackawanna, they throw five, I think almost five, four or four receivers out in the pattern. There's no one in the block except West, and they pick up all three of them. And remember, West is only a sophomore now. Here it is, though. He can't pick up all three of these yeah. guys coming. Well, he didn't miss the block. Okay, I, I take that back to West. It was not West's fault, and uh, they are going to go for it. Yeah, this is the right call, because he put it in the end zone. He only got right. 10 yards on the play. they got to get it to the 8-yard line. Here comes the pitch again. Okonski breaks through. The last few seconds of the throw's got Sharika. He caught it. Oh, First down, great he's on pass. the 5. Wow, Kevin, great pass. Same play for a touchdown, Mark Collins. <laughs> I tell you, Sharika, and I was down on the sidelines in the first half, Walt, and I was talking to Dick Gallagher, and I said, Dick, this kid it looks like the only kid that really came here to play in the first half. Really, the only one showing some emotion out there. He came up with two beautiful big catches. But look at Kowalski, sidestep, Okonski. Not a great pass, but I mean, a great pass with the result. It's sort of flooded there. Let's watch it. Sidestep, Okonski. Sarika, huge game for Sarika, huge, and for Kowalski. That's the same play they scored a touchdown on late in the first half, and Kowalski gets hit as he throws it. Whoa, I hit low there on the knee, but... but oh, look, 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 look at, look at, 44 is clapping a little bit too soon. He thought that play was stopped. That's where Kowalski's going to come up and start clapping, but the play was fired from over, because he creamed, they creamed Kowalski. And that was a nice, real nice catch over the shoulder, but like I said, Sarika... Two big plays, really, in the first half. He was the only guy that looked like he really wanted to be out on the field playing, and it shows up again in the second half. Well, they, Lackawanna has taken a timeout here. That first and goal at the three-yard line here, and I think Walt maybe going to be listening to you here. Probably going to go to Turner, Turner, Turner. That's all you do is run Turner right now, and Chris Burdett, unfortunately, was the quarterback, 41, beaten on that last play. And if throw was a good throw, it wasn't uh, exactly a spiral mark, Collins, and you know all about throws, but it got there. you got to give him credit just for getting it off. Well, a lot of pressure the last few times he dropped back the pass, and just to get the ball off, it was fourth down, didn't want to take the sack. There you know, he's got to get the ball, number three. Turner, late, late, he's a deep set back here. Gets to Turner, pushing, pushing, is he in? Touchdown! Came a long way from over, but a great comeback here by the Lackawanna Steelers against a tough, tough team. And not only that, well, when you give it to Turner now, you get him back in the game emotionally. Well, let's see, the score's 13 to 12. I uh, gotta think you go for, but they don't, they, they haven't kicked all year long. No, they, they don't. They, 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 no, they, they have. They have to kick with Sarika at the inside scoop, Walt. That was down the sideline. I said, why aren't they kicking it? He said, have you looked at us all year? They don't have a field goal Yes, they do. Robert <laughs> Sarika can kick extra points. Well, they're going for two. That's the question, is. Kowalski gives. Now they're going to keep it himself. But he's got blockers out in front. But, and does he get in? Yes, they said he got in. Well, he he's stepped in the corner by the pylon. Just like I said, he goes for two. <laughs> that was a battle of the quarterback. Young comes up, almost they tackle. But, well, like I was saying, the, the, uh, I was talking to one of the uh, Lackawanna guys on the sideline and he said, hey, he's looking at the touchdown. Turner just powers it in there. But, well, well, let's get the game in perspective. Uh, excuse me, Mark. I'll get to my thoughts after you. Right. Well, well, let's watch the two-point conversion. Oh, yeah. He's just, just going to get it over. Oh, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. He's just going to get it in the left corner. I think he's going to get it over. Yeah, 
extra points come into play here, Walt, as you mentioned in the, in the first half. So, 8.20 to play. Lackawanna takes the lead 16 to 12, and the boys are starting to come here. The deal snow, this is Carries back at the 12. Four now, gets a big block. Had a hold, but that closed right up there. Kima Dickinson, boy, for being disciplined in this game, he's picked up well on special teams. Take a look at the scoring summary for the Lackawanna Steelers as they take the lead in this game. 11 plays, 77 yards, guys. Four minutes, 13 seconds. Ray Turner, three-yard run, two-point conversion, good. Yeah, and a miracle. Fourth and 22 play. Pulled off. This might make up for Lackawanna when they lost to Chip Nango years ago to 93 on a critical fourth down play and got knocked out late in that ball game. Give to Gary. He busts ahead for four yards on a first down carry. However, we should mention, as the snow starting to come down, as you mentioned, Kevin, Cornell, a very good ball club. This game is a long way from over. There's still eight minutes on the clock. So if you're a Steelers fan, don't start celebrating yet. And Young is a terrific quarterback. There's Bill Miller, close up, look. Second down and six. Plenty of time for Hornell. Young gives to Rose, the fullback, bang, first down. Rashawn Leon, the top number 12, he was playing with a little bit of a makeshift defense, too. Rashawn Leon for Mike Messica at the linebacker spot. And the Hornell fans are not giving up. That's a good-looking run. Like I said, I, you, you can see where they're missing Messicar there, Ross. He just fills the holes a little bit there. A little, a little heavier up there. Lee's kind of full in for him, but uh, really his position is in the defensive backfield. So yeah, Rashad Lee's just a sophomore. Oh! Hornell fans screaming right in front of us. We appreciate that. Jeffy's on the carry. Oh, big hit there at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of five. We got Feeney, 15, that pushed him back. Rashawn Lee's all fired up, but I thought it was number 15 that hit him. They're all congratulating Rashawn Lee for him. Let's pick up the number. Oh. It's Feeney and Lee. Feeney hit him first, and then Lee cleaned up. Watch 15 and 12. We'll make the stop. Here's Feeney on the hit, and Rashawn will come in from the other angle. Actually, it was more Rashawn. Checking down five for the Red Raiders. Give to Rose. Whoa, well, hit right there. Lines Phillips spins off. He took a big hit from John Dean and spun off for a yard. So that's why I think, Mark, the Steelers have to attack the football. Start chopping at that football. Rose had that ball. Very vulnerable position. Yeah, that, this is the Lackawanna team that you used to see. And, I mean, they're really getting to the ball a lot more. In the first half, not at all. But now in the second half, especially... You know, in the late the third quarter, they really started coming out, and now they got some motion on the sideline also. And you can forget about fourth down if they don't make it out third. They'll go out fourth now, late in the game. Third down and a long two. The give to Gary. He has the first down in the second effort. Gary just had a superior football game. He really has. He did, but it was a missed tackle in the backfield there while... We see Reese. Reese had him for a, a big loss there. It really would have made it a tough fourth down situation right here. Breaks the tackle. Reese is right on there. He's just a good, hard run. Jerry's good, good, good halfback. Well, they continue to keep it out of the ground, Kevin. 48-yard line of Lackawanna. First down for the Red Raiders. We approach five and a half minutes to play. And they keep it on the ground with Jerry. Look at that cutback. And he picked up seven yards. So I'll tell you one thing, though. Even without Mexico. Steelers are starting to lay the lumber out. They had fun with a hard hit. They're really hitting out there. Yeah, but unfortunately, they're laying it eight yards downfield on this play, Walt. They can't let them rip off the yardage here. I'll tell you, Hornell, give a lot of credit. This is a tough part of the game to really bear down. And this is where Young, I think, comes in. Four-year starter. A lot of poise, a lot of composure. Nice drive he's got going so far. And Corey Gary's is that breakaway back. Pitch to Gary's. Handles it. Nice open field tackle there by Gilbert. I think Gary's a yard shy of the first down. Henry Ferralski after Gilbert with him. Henry Ferralski stepping on defense and offense. Again, what Gilbert's going to make the original stop. Let's watch 19. Textbook tackle here. Down low. Beautiful. And there's Ferralski cleaning up. One thing the Steelers do, Mark, to take a second look, is they tackle well. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, that, this is the team I'm used to seeing. All hard hitters, good tacklers, getting off the box. They're going to need everything they got in this last drive right here, though. Tight formation.
position, third and one. Young on the keeper, did not get it. He actually lost a yard on the play. Well, Sarika and Dean in on the tackle, and you see 56, Tom Stampone. Tom Stampone is 222 pounds. Let's watch who makes the initial hit. It's Stampone low and Sarika high. This Stampone is 6'2", 22. He might have a future in uh, football. He's got nice size. That was a real good effort by him there. It was the quarterback on the option. When he fakes the dive, Stampone stays with him, goes down the line, and makes a great defensive play. And they had a big time, too. Well. That was a big down. Well, time out on the field, Kevin. This could well be the ball game right here. It was 4-12 left. That's yeah, certainly the running game of Lackawanna. It can be big play here on 3 and 2. And uh, yeah, here we are up here in the booth here. Just, you know, now we look warm up here with, with a jacket and walk. You know, I don't know where you got this. Yeah. I got, it on, I got it on sale when they won the Super Bowl. But I tell you what, we are standing in a pile of snow here and take a look at the fans uh, below us here. And really, Hornell traveled well to this football game today. Hornell's played a great football game. They got a class coach, uh, Gene Maston, a nice staff, good football team. Played Lackawanna as tough as they could be played. Lackawanna's got a good staff with Tony Pagliari, Paul Fitzgerald, and Kevin Pagliari, and Joe Trigger. Head first still more. It's been a good ball game, no matter who wins it. Here comes the fourth down play. Young on the option. The keeper may have gotten it. I think he got it. I think he got it, too. I think Sarika, at that time, pushed him forward, and it enabled Young to get the first down yardage. Depends on the spot. I think he's got it, but... Yeah, they're going to measure, like, guys. It looked like Young went there. All the fans are doing here from Hornell. They think it was a bad spot. Crew referee is Bob Patrick. Here is Winky from Section 5. Well, they're going to measure this one here, and a key measurement, 407 remains on the clock here. And Hornell trails 16 to 12. Talking 407, as you mentioned, Kevin, this is critical. I think, he, I think he got the first I think down, he got but it, too, but you never know. Oh, he's short. He's short. Yeah, I knew your eyes weren't good. I, 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 I knew your eyes weren't good. <laughs> I knew you see the ball at that one. I think he got a bad spot. I think I that he had by after, the yard. I think that after he got hit, it looked like he had the first down. I know, he he had the official <laughs> spot of the ball, Bob yeah, yeah, Patrick. The Hornell fans immediately got up and started to boo. Now, uh, no, uh, he did reach up after he knee, was down. Looks like his knee was down. Let's right, right, watch where the knee's down. You get a proper angle on it. And then he stretches the ball. Yeah, he stretched that's after his knee hit the ground. So that's a tough one to call. Good call. And plus, you said the ref from section five, so you yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, that's a great call. He's from section five. Yeah. That's a section five team going over the first down. I guess it's the right call. It was the right call. It was the right call, yeah. Great shot by our trimmer. Same bound. Kowalski goes out of bounds, flag on the play, is that in the area of Hovey? Well, critical mistake by Sarika here. He didn't need to throw that block. Uh, Kowalski was in front of him if they call it on Sarika. And, and not a smart play, as you mentioned, by Kowalski, stay in bounds. No, here, here you do, you just, you, we get the call here. Bob Patrick's the referee, he's the fellow in the white hat. Harris Winky, uh, Jimmy Kelvin. Bruce Hoffman and Steve uh, Stewart Hardy on the offense. Can you tell me this guy? Okay, well you got a question to call, Walt. I mean, this is four minutes to go. Run some power football. You got two of the best backs out in the state in your backfield. Well, I, I don't know if I'd have questioned the ball or call. I questioned the guy going out of bounds. Maybe it's a good call, uh, Kevin. Your answer was because you're not hanging the football off. I, I, I'd hand the football off myself here. you got to get the first it. downs, though, Walt. I mean, right. You can't run out of bounds. And you, 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 he's not supposed to run out of bounds. That's no, either way, he didn't call for his team to hold on the play. Well, right? they have a guy on the team named Turner. First down at 20. And here is the keeper again. And Kowalski. He had about five yards on that carry and stayed in bounds on the play. Now, he was instructed to stay in bounds. And he did. He could have run out of bounds at the time. He was instructed stay in bounds. Well, the one thing, like I said, I mentioned that uh, he has the green light to check off anytime he wants on his plays, and I, I kind of question that, especially yeah. in the playoffs, as far as a young quarterback as a junior, you know, I'm going to start calling the plays to coach saying, you run the plays, I'm calling right now. I will tell you what's happening. They're afraid to hand the football off and see if they fumble. That's what I see here. Yeah, well, you can't. You have a good point, Walt. Yeah. you got to play to win it. Right. Walt. I, I, gotta, I agree. Get... Sometimes coaches overcoach. Yeah, you but I think they're afraid to hand it off. If you don't get a first down here, you give them the ball back. they got three minutes from the game. Walsh only got three, second down, 17. This time they do hand it off to Turner, up the gut, and 
and he gets about five yards on the carry, and Horn Elson took a timeout here with 3.02, and a big third and long coming up on Lackawanna. And Nate McMind, another big play, 74, having a huge game defensively, and you know, the Hornell uh, defense, we didn't hear a whole lot about them. Their speed defense, they tackle the ball, their linebackers, as you see, Dickinson shipped his suit, maybe. Rose and Rowland are their strength, along with Young in the defensive secondary. They've held Lackawanna in check. When you hold Lackawanna to 16 points, it's a heck of a football game. And when you hold them in check for four quarters, too, Walt. So last week, Springville, Springville played well the first half, couldn't hold them for four quarters. So I'll tell you, Hornell, talking to Coach Masterson, he said, you know, we're coming, it's a long bus ride, but he said, I'm telling you, when we pull in, you're not going to see any white flags hanging out the window. He right. said, I know Lackawanna's loaded, and they got a lot of speed, but, you know, my kids are, we're going to come, and we're going to play our best, and, and, and this is probably one of the best games they've played all season long. Probably is, but Kevin, you got to get Dave D to do it in case Lackawanna wins this game, and I hate to do it, but <laughs> Charlie Kowalski is the difference in the game. If Charlie Kowalski, as you see our camera person there, doesn't make the two big passes, they're not in the football game. They're going to lose it. Yeah, you see, I believe that's... My vote goes to the guy on the receiving end of those two walks. Well, no, the quarterback. The quarterback made the play. I want to mention uh, how well our crew has done here uh, in today's game. Given the weather conditions, they got two more to go here. And by the way, with these games we're doing, if you want to buy a copy of this tape, you, you can do that. Send it to my house. No, no, don't have to wall it up. But you, you can purchase a copy of this game. As you see, uh, I think it's James on the photo back there. Or is that Chuck? That's Chuck. Our man Chuck on the photo back there. Chuck, get, get some gloves, Chuck. And there's James. There's James, a big Buffalo Bills fan. <laughs> yeah, huge Bills fan. I'll tell you what, though. These kids wouldn't go on without those fellas there. And the people yeah. back in the That's truck great. and all those who set up here. Don right next to up in the booth here. Jeff here. And uh, some more of our crew there. The Adep Why don't we get the snowmobile suits? We, we got the jackets. I want the Adelphia snowmobile suit, guys. Let me tell you, usually I always dress poor for games. Uh, yeah, my son dressed too. They wore his boots. Yeah, the, the, the girls, the girls yeah. in the truck too. By the way, I'm all ready for this. I'm warm. Third down here, coming up. Well, as I mentioned, if you want to buy a copy of the tape, make sure you send your name, address, and 1750 to Delphia in West Seneca, New York. Of course, they had their check for about a year. 14224, the mailman will get it there. Third down, 11. Big play in this game with 302. Here comes a draw to Turner. They keep it on the ground, and he is stopped behind a lot of scrimmage. I believe the nose tackle got him. Right. Hornell. No. No, actually, that was Rowland, the Section 5 Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, he's not that big either. That's a surprise. He's 204. The Hornell Red Raiders, as you see Turner bottle up there, and there's Rowland on the key tackle. He leads the club with 104 tackles coming in. Trivia question. Can't they put a stop on Red Raiders team? There's too many of them. <laughs> Everybody's Red Raiders. That's a good point, Walt. That's the best point you've made all game, my friend. No, it's not. I thank you very much, sir. Fourth down now in Lackawanna. First in a punting situation here, 254, so O'Neill will have time on the clock, especially with their passing game, and they'll send back Gary's and Brewer. To return the football here. And Brewer's a guy we haven't heard from all day. He, he came in, he's the top receiver for Hornell on the season and has done much. But now he's yeah. had a big game. I don't think Brewer caught a pass. Well, I, think I, think a pass. I think the reason that is because they really didn't need to use him in the first half. They were running the ball so well and, you know, really controlling the clock. And that's what they want to do. When you throw the ball, stop the clock. So, well, but you're going to see him in this next series. Are they going to keep the Brewer once he's back? Keep the Gary's. I'd be worried about him. Sarika's punch. Gets it off, nice and spot. it bounces at the 40, and it'll go out of bounds. Actually, it'll down it. It looks like it's headed out of bounds, but they'll stop it at the 30-yard line down there. So 70 yards separate Hornell from Victor here, 242 to play. What a great punt by Sarika. It's almost, it's a cost of quarter punt for not using it in the end zone. He kicks it away from Gary. Doesn't give him a chance to return the ball. He's played an exceptional game. Obviously, he's had the two big kicks, but he played well on defense and uh, good special teams. Yeah, and they needed, both. I mean, they, the big guys didn't really show up in the first half. They needed someone to step up, and he did today. Snow starting to come down heavier. First down play, handoff to Burdett, and he only got three yards on the carry as he was tripped up. Well, one thing I hate to say is that Lackawanna over the years has been a snake pit team in sectional play. And hopefully for them it won't happen again. 
bit of problems with our monitor upstairs. They have some good defensive backs here, though, so it's not going to be easy for Young to throw the ball. Second down play, Young to throw. Uh, Looking deep, he's deep. got Brewer, and it's almost picked off by Lee. Good coverage there by Dickinson. He actually had him open, though, and it, when it looked like he's coming across the middle, it looks like he's wide open, but like I said, Kevin, they got some great athletes in the defensive backfield, and they really can make up ground in a hurry. Well, it looked like he was open, but good defensive backs. Rashad Lee had a chance to maybe intercept this ball. I think he underthrew it. Yeah, he did. He underthrew that ball. That's where it's all about five yards deeper, and that could have been a touchdown. Third down and seven, 2.09 to play. There's the throw. Yeah, I know. And watch where it ends up. That ball's going a little deeper. That could have been a score. They have some great athletes in defensive backfield, but I, I, right here, I'd move back a little bit off the line of scrimmage. I mean, because they got beat on that pattern. Well, Lackawanna has been there before and has gotten burned on a long pass to lose late in the game. Well, it's coming up. He lets it go. Caught by Burdett, but only a gain of two yards on a play. And there were three Steelers in the backfield. And a great play by Feeney on a defensive coverage. Because you leave yourself open when you rush that many people. And Feeney was all over the receiver. And I like it here. Defensive coordinator says, let's open up the floodgates for him. You know, let's put some pressure on him. And that's what they got to do. Because Young's too good to let him sit back in the pocket. Football game. It was Turner. Turner on the rush. Football game right here. Fourth and five. Young to throw. Pressure by Sharika. Let's it go. Man open Johnson. And it's knocked away by Dilbert. I think it was Rashad Lee. Or Dilbert. But I think Rashad might have got a piece of that. And you say Dilbert. It was Dilbert. Yeah, well, like I said, they, they have some, they, these guys really close fast on the ball when it's in the air. And that's, that's like I said, <laughs> the big guy showed up in the second half. Well, he was open. I tell you, though, give Sharika a lot off. of credit because he's the one that puts the pressure on the quarterback. He has just played a great, here he is right here. Yeah, watch the pass. He steps up. Good pass, and there's the hit. And coming over, as you saw, was Gilbert, number 19, <laughs> to whack it away. That's right, Kevin. This was a perfect pass. They say good pressure. pass by Young. And a very disconsolate coach there. And a very nice gentleman. And they need a miracle. Yes, they do. And Kowalski just going to take a knee here, which is the smart play for Lackawanna. Boy, what a comeback for Lackawanna in this football game. Well, Lackawanna going to go on and play at Rochester Fiverr Stadium next week if they hang on and win this game. And remember, you heard it a couple of weeks ago. We said they were going to win the state championship. And if they were going to lose one, this was a losable game for Lackawanna. Yeah, they're going to have to play much better in the next two ball games if they're going to win the state. Well, they're going to have to get healthy now, too. All right, they had Dickinson, didn't start the game because of disciplinary yeah. reasons. They had the top linebacker, Mesakar, out. The offensive line was a shambles today. They need to be healthy next year. Well, that's one thing in the playoffs. You know, you got to start there when you're really down the football, Sarika. In the playoffs, well, you're going to have... Because that ball fall, fall, fall start on the offense. Five yards, Tommy, we're going to have two second down. The, uh, the best guy was out with an injury. Uh, Deion Davis was uh, uh, suspended, uh, disciplined. He didn't start. He's a normal starting guard. Yeah, you know, most teams are going to have some nicks as they go along in the playoffs, but what they have to do is, you know, they have to be a little more, you know, they have to get the fundamentals down. You can't be turning the ball over twice, three times in the first half and expect to win the state. Yeah, unfortunately, we uh, take a look at that fast start by Sarika. Orchard Park, when we do the double-A game, they have some serious injuries playing against Bayport. Second down play, Kowalski likely, you know, they're going to pitch it to Turner. And they'll run this football here, and He'll cover up with both hands, brother. <laughs> he didn't cover up with quite as much as I thought he would, guys. Now, yeah, Turner just wanted to hang on to the football and stay involved. I, I really feel for that coach there because uh, he's a heck of a guy. Gene Mastin, he came in with a, a perfect game plan that worked to uh, perfection in the first half, Mark. And a good game plan even in the second half. It really, the momentum didn't swing it went until third, it's late in the third quarter. I think that uh, Kevin Sylvester's got double duty. A great job here on the play by play. He's going to go down the field. We're going to give it too long. The interview, I don't know. We'll leave that up to Kevin. Uh, I guess we don't have yeah. a face there, but Sarika, I like, it, I, I like that. Pick. It, no, I think he picked Kowalski. Kowalski? Yeah, it's Kowalski. Yeah, that's it. The clock runs to 3 0, and the Lackawanna Steelers have advanced in the Class C Championship to Fowler Stadium in Rochester to the semifinals. They were in the semifinals in Fowler Stadium in 1993 and lost to Chittenango in a blizzard snowstorm condition.
possession on a fourth down play. So we'll come right back to final score. The Lackawanna Steelers 16, the Hornell Red Raiders 12. We'll be right back. And I'm Jody Johnston. Start your Christmas shopping with us on Saturday, November 22nd from 7 to 11 p.m. During the Rotary Club of Amherst North TV auction to benefit Camp Good Days and Special Times. You can call in and bid on some great items. Do your Christmas shopping early right from the comfort of your own living room. So join us Saturday, November 22nd from 7 to 11 p.m. On Adelphia Channel 18.